Hello friends, there are many people who like and collect classic vintage boomboxes. Very cool if you have reel-to-reel -reel cassettes. This cassette looks very stylish in any audio equipment. These cassettes can be bought on eBay or from vintage equipment collectors. But such reel-to-reel -reel cassettes are very expensive. This is really a rare thing today. In this video, I want to show you how you can make such a cassette with your own hands. I need a regular transparent cassette and a some amount of time. First of all, we take a transparent film for printing on an inkjet printer. Such a film is sold in ordinary stores. I'll take Lohman film, but you can use any other. We need a film without glue. Such film is usually sold in stores where you can buy office paper, printer ink, and other office supplies. One side is smooth and the other is matte. The printer prints on the matte side. The film is completely transparent. I also need paint. I use white acrylic spray paint. You can usually buy this in stores that sell parts for cars. In this video, I will show white paint, but in general I tried different colors. You can choose gold, silver, green and any other colors according to your design. Now I need a graphics editor program. It is better to use software for working with vector graphics. For example, I will use the CorelDRAW program. I drew the design of my future cassettes. Here I place logos and various inscriptions. It is best to adhere to the visual standards that were used in the production of these reel-to-reel -reel cassettes. Don't forget to specify sides 1 and 2. The compact cassette logo will look good. The next step is to print our layout on film. Note that I'm flip mirroring my design. The printer prints on the matte side of the film. Therefore, the pattern will be visible through the film, back to front. If you will be cutting your reels with scissors, you should print the cut lines. Approximately like this. I will cut my reels on a cutting plotter. Therefore, I will not need the outlines of the circles and holes themselves. If using scissors, be sure to print your entire design, including cutting lines, so that you can see the whole coil completely. In my version, these are only inscriptions and logos. After we have printed our layout on film, we take the paint. It can be white, silver or any other. For colored paints, I recommend using metallic effect paint. It will look very good. I tried using acrylic enamel. This paint is well suited for this task. We apply paint to the matte side of our film. I recommend painting in several thin coats. There is no need to rush in this matter. If you touch the film, you will feel that one of its surfaces is matte. Paint on this side. Do not confuse. Do not paint on the glossy side. The paint won't stay there and will fall off. I have tried other colors. Look, I have a gold, silver and blue version. After I cut out my layout, I got these wonderful coils. They will accordingly be of the color you applied. And so, I colored my film. I did not shoot this process, so as not to stain the camera. If you cut the coils with scissors, then you should get this result. On the one hand, it will be white, and on the other, the design of your coils with cutting lines. I will use a cutting plotter. So I don't need cut lines. I printed out only the inscriptions and the logo. There are special labels here. The optical sensor of the plotter will be able to accurately determine the place where the coils need to be cut. If you will cut the coils with your hands, use small nail scissors. I want to draw your attention to the fact that such scissors are of different quality. In this case, it is not worth saving. Don't use cheap scissors. Buy a good expensive model. 
high-quality sharp scissors will allow you to achieve the best result. And so, we take scissors and carefully, very carefully cut out each coil. Don't be in a hurry. Do everything slowly and carefully. When you gain experience, you will be able to do it quite well. I first cut out my layouts with scissors. But of course the best way is to use a cutting plotter. Today on sale there are not expensive models for the home master. I bought a silhouette cameo plotter. But scissors can cut very well. The main thing is not to rush and take good quality scissors. You can see how the plotter detects marks on the film. To do this, it uses an optical sensor. This operation allows me to determine exactly where my coils need to be cut. The layout for cutting is a separate file that I loaded into the plotter software. After determining the coordinates, the plotter starts to cut my coils. The plotter can work faster. But I don't recommend high cutting speed. The slower the knife cuts, the more accurately it does it. After 3 minutes I get a cut out layout. Maybe you don't see it very well. See the cut lines? This is what my film looks like after the plotter is done. Now I just have to separate my coils from the sticky base. Now I need to take transparent cassettes. I'll take Watson cassettes. I like these cassettes because they are completely transparent. The film rollers here are pale grey. Other cassettes have these clips in bright colours, such as yellow or red. It is better to take cassettes with white or grey coils. The second option I use is TDK cassettes. This is a special edition for industrial applications. Therefore, there are no inscriptions and logos on their body. They are completely transparent. Now I need to pull out the transparent damper film from these cassettes. I also need super glue. You can buy this at your nearest store. It is better to use glue in the form of a gel. Such glue will not spread. I glue the reels to the center rollers. As a result, we get such a beautiful cassette. It will take three drops. There should be very little glue. One, two, and three. And then I glue the reel. This must be done very smoothly. If glued off center, then the reel will vibrate during rotation. As a result, I get a cassette that can be used for its intended purpose. She works. You can record and play into your favorite music on it. The reels will spin. This is very similar to a factory made reel to reel cassette. I take a transparent cassette. It is necessary to unscrew five screws. I take out the damper film. She is no longer needed.
I rewound the entire tape onto the left coil. The right coil is empty. I will stick my tape on it. I recommend doing just that. If you apply glue to an empty roller, you do not run the risk of smearing the tape on the cassette with glue. I use instant glue. It is sometimes referred to as super glue. Do not use liquid glue. I use a thick gel consistency. I need to center my film very precisely. If you stick it a little crooked, then during rotation the coil will knock and twitch. You need to apply very small drops of glue. You can add more points. But the drops themselves should be tried to make a small size. Large drops of glue can melt the paint and film of my reel. I press the reel. You need to wait a while for the glue to dry. Now I turn the coil over and stick a round film on the other side. Don't forget that your reels should have different designs. The first should be number one, and the second should be number two. Now the task becomes more difficult. It is necessary not only to align the film in the center. It is necessary to turn it in such a way that the cutouts are opposite each other. Make sure that the position of the inscriptions and logos on both sides coincide, they should be opposite each other, this is how it should be done. I apply glue. If the drops of glue are very large, then the glue will dissolve the paint. This will cause the adhesive to be visible through the transparent film. It is better to use small drops, but their number may be more than three. As a result, I got such a beautiful reel. I return it to the cassette and rewind the tape to the right roller. To do this, you have to assemble the cassette. You don't need to tighten all the screws. I only screwed in one screw in the center. The other of the screws are not needed. We'll screw them on later when we're done. I insert the cassette into the boombox and rewind the tape. After I have moved the entire tape to the right, I disassemble the cassette again. Again I glue two round films in the same way as I did before. As a reminder, you need to keep an eye on the orientation of your design. Letters, logos and holes should be opposite each other. Make sure that the number one is written on one side and the number two is written on the other. After the glue has dried, I assemble the cassette back. Now you can tighten all the screws. Remember that we no longer need a transparent damper film. It must be removed from the cassette. You may notice that we have an extra audio tape. If you follow the standard of such cassettes, then there should be less tape here. To cut off the excess audio tape, I pull it out with a screwdriver. Next, I make a cut and unwind the excess tape. It is necessary to remove the tape so that the edge of the reel approximately coincides with the edge of the audio tape. Then we glue the ends of the tape. Glue the audio tape with thin scotch, in the 80s, some people tried gluing audio tape with acetone or women's nail polish. But I can say that this method is not very reliable. I don't recommend using it. The strongest connection method is adhesive tape. It may seem that gluing with adhesive tape is inconvenient. But in reality, such a connection will hold much stronger than a connection with acetone. 
Nail polish dries out over time and the bond can break. Well, it turned out so beautiful. I unwound the tape, glued it. I think this is a great result. There is a difference between these two cassettes. This one I cut out with scissors. As I said, you will need very high quality sharp nail scissors. At first I tried to use cheap Chinese scissors and the result was bad. Then I took good German scissors and it started to turn out much better. But if you take this cassette in your hands and look at it very carefully, you can see the cut lines. I tried very hard, but still in some places you can see the edges of the black lines. When you cut out such a coil, you must try not to see the black lines. In addition, if you look closely, you can see that the cutout is not very even. Everything looks good from a distance, but when you look closely, you can see that this is handmade. But I created this cassette using a cutting plotter. And here I would like to make an important point. When I take this cassette in my hands and look at it carefully, it is impossible to notice that it was made at home. There is an absolute illusion that this is a factory version. Smooth precise cutting lines. There are no black lines anywhere. Very similar to factory production. None of your friends will guess that this tape was made by hand. Well, that's all I can show you. Use good scissors or a cutting plotter. If you do everything carefully, you will get such beautiful cassettes. Undoubtedly, they will decorate any vintage audio equipment.